Welcome to AW360 Live at Advertising Week in New York. I'm BJ Smith. I have with me John Devine of Oath. Welcome. Nice to be here, BJ. Thank you. It's great to have you. Yeah. So, for those who aren't familiar with Oath, this is a bringing together AOL and Yahoo. So, what are, why, why bring those two companies together and what are some of the opportunities? Sure. Um, it's an exciting time. Uh, you know, you, you talk about the, the, the name Oath, the brand Oath. Uh, we just launched a brand campaign this week. It's a new name in the marketplace, but it really fundamentally is the combination of Yahoo and AOL, as you as you as you said, uh, under the ownership of Verizon. Okay. Um, so incredible um, combination. You have two iconic companies uh, in the industry, really groundbreaking icons uh, with AOL and Yahoo. Uh, so two, uh, you know, long lineage, very proud, rich traditions and cultures. Um, I think the coming together has, has, for Verizon as the owner and for us internally, has a few important benefits. One, there's just the obvious sense of scale and reach. Uh, the two companies alone, Yahoo, AOL, uh, had decent reach, but between the two, you know, you now have a billion users together under one set of, uh, one set of uh, consumer brands. Um, the company is a house of brands, Yahoo Sp Sports, Yahoo News, Yahoo Finance, AOL, TechCrunch, Huffington Post and Gadget, et cetera, et cetera. All of those brands kind of come together under that name of, of Oath. Um, but we're la launching a new brand campaign this week to help everybody understand uh, what Oath is. Um, behind the name is, a, is really a commitment around trust. Right. Um, we think trust is very important in the marketplace right now. It's very topical right very now. Very topical sure. this year. Uh, and I, I think it almost ended up being a fortunate timing. Um, but we do believe that is at the core, uh, Yahoo and AOL. Now Oath together offer not only scale, but I think real trusted content in those properties I just described. Right. Uh, you know, trusted canvases for, for brands to really create great brand experiences and connect with their audiences and context. Uh, trusted data, um, a tremendous, almost an embarrassment of riches we have, we believe, right. at the company with our search data, mail data, web data, app data, uh, a company called Flurry we bought a few years ago. Uh, SDK, um, you know, a million apps use that SDK, it's on two billion handsets, all of that data comes into Oath, and so the combination of reach, trusted content, trusted data, trusted distribution um, is how we're going to compete, and we're really, really excited about doing something very special. We think it's an important time in the marketplace, as you suggested, there's been uh, a lot of interesting topics in the air this year, yeah. and um, we, I, you know, we think there's a market there that wants to be served on that basis of trust and human commitment. So. Okay. You were on a panel, worked on a panel on Monday, right? Yeah, correct. That was, uh, does technology have a heart? Why AI needs EQ? And, you know, that, that's very interesting because you're talking about the amount of data that you have, especially bringing all of this together. Um, and, you know, it seems to be that AI is the answer for a lot of companies to sort of sort through this data and, and, and use it. So uh, why does AI need that EQ that's emotional? component. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was saying we had our sales conference a couple of weeks ago, and I, in my keynote remarks, I was remark, I was commenting how I think exciting it it is for all of us, and for me personally, to work in an industry at a time where the left brain and the right brain are both, you know, so important. Sure. And as a company, I think we almost, you know, feel like we're right between the two hemispheres of the brain. Um, I think they are both important. Um, certainly, our legacy. Uh, I had the background at Yahoo, Silicon Valley company, uh, you know, w worked on the Hadoop cluster for a long time. You know, we just truly embedded belief in the power of data. And I think, I think data is, when it comes to advertising, uh, has been tremendously powerful and continues to be sharper and sharper when it comes to, I guess, the, the who, um, the when, and the where of finding audiences. Right. You know, I think finding audiences in context at the right time is something that data does very powerfully. And I think it's to uh, the consumer's advantages as well as to the advertiser's advantages. I still think the why, uh, you know, the emotional message sure. is something that um, machines aren't going to take over anytime really soon. <laughs> and so, you know, that, that beautiful message uh, the beautiful emotional connection is going to have to come, I think, with the involvement of the creativity. And so bringing those two together is uh, you know, it's just a really magical thing. Um, but I think they both keep each other in check. I think the industry has gone, the pendulum has been swinging a lot in the a direction lot, yes. of data and programmatic. And I think a lot of that, that's been very good. 
but a lot of it comes with uh, you know some risk as well. And I think in some cases brands feel like they're uh, losing their losing their brand and losing their connection with that with their consumers a little bit uh, in that data driven programmatic ecosystem. And so uh, you know again it comes back to the message that we feel is important around in the industry and for us around Oath is that human connection. You know that actually brings makes me think of a personal story, and this goes back to the very early days of programmatic. As a matter of fact, uh, when we were doing using this ad buy for the brand that I was working with, um, we initially left one company who was doing everything by hand, spreadsheets, and yeah. and it literally was a rocket scientist who was doing the work for us. Uh, and then we went to this other company that had all this technology built around it, and we saw the quality go down yeah. over time. Yeah. And now, now, programmatic and all this technology has improved immensely since then. But, you know, it was something about having that eye on there uh, and then having even me there to go back and check and say, you know what, this stuff that you're telling me should perform well, it doesn't make sense for the brand. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a, it's just, it's a really interesting line we walk. And, and we're not tech bashers. We're tech embracers. We're tech yeah. builders. But you see the frustration. You know, when I sit with advertisers, or you, you know, you come to events like this, um, Mark Pritchard or Jamie Dimon or others. I mean, they're oh, they're cringing with the, you know, the sense of loss of, of emotional connection with their brand and the sense of being underserved and, frankly, sometimes um, deceived. You know, there's just a lot of bad actors in the digital digital uh, wild west, if you will, and so. Um, I, you know, this is this is a never-ending human, you know, uh, romance with technology. And we're going to continue to do this dance, and every once in a while, I step on each other's feet. But uh, uh, you know, I, I know there's great things out there with technology ahead. But but I, I think I think I think it's 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 a really beautiful thing to bring the technology and the human creativity together. So we're going to keep doing that. All right, great, John. Thank you for joining me today. Awesome. We'll be back with more AW360 Live at Advertising Week New York.